Right, for the recording purposes, good morning everybody. For those of you who have not been able to join with us live online, and we're going to be looking this morning at the way, truth, and life as we consider John chapter 14 this morning. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, reading verse 6, where the Lord Jesus Christ said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's have a brief word of prayer. Father God, as we thank you for your word this morning, we pray that your word would work effectually in each and every one of us as we trust it, as we read it, as we believe it. We thank you for this in Christ Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking here, and I want to put it into perspective where the Lord is talking to his followers, and he had just previously, the book of John records um, that, that Jesus said to Peter, you were going to deny me. What happens in John chapter 14 is Jesus foretells his coming to his own. And he says in John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Notice this. The Lord says, let not your heart be troubled. I know right now there are so many folks who are facing different challenges in different ways. And their hearts are troubled. Their inner man, the soul, the very depths of who they are, they are troubled and battling and grappling through so many things. And the Lord Jesus Christ here, speaking to his followers, primarily here the nation of Israel, that he had come for. Because the Old Testament prophecies had clearly prophesied that the Lord Jesus Christ was coming to earth. Way back, if we go just way back, where the Lord God, God the Father, called out a man by the name of Abram, changed his name to Abraham, and said, I would make of you a mighty nation. He took him out and brought him out through that, through the world, and Israel became a mighty nation. God then gave them the law. He gave them all the instructions that they needed to be his people here on earth. And it was through them that God was going to restore and bring mankind into an understanding and a relationship with him. Right when the very last book of the Old Testament is written, the book of Malachi, God gives 400 years. For 400 years, the nation of Israel had the entire Old Testament scriptures. Now, it's interesting because 400, if you take the number 40 in scripture, the number 40 is the number of a generation. Um, it's also a number of testing. The, the nation of Israel um, were, were tested when Jesus Christ went into the wilderness. He was tested 40 days. If you just have a look at the number 40 throughout that. And 400 years is 40 times 10. It's 10 generations. And the number 10 is the number of the Gentiles. So I look at that and I see God had given his word to his nation. And for 400 years, for 10 generations, they had opportunity to fulfill his word. Now we know, as we look back and history tells us, that the nation of Israel were lost. And we're going to look at some scriptures now about that. And the Lord Jesus Christ comes to earth. And what he does is he comes to fulfill his father's will. And part of that is that he came to earth to live a complete and full, perfect life. Then to die on the cross at Calvary. And what the Lord Jesus Christ is, is doing here in John chapter 14, he's telling his followers, he's telling the nation of Israel, let not your heart be troubled. Notice, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Well, they had known and, and were told in the Old Testament scriptures that God, their father, would be their guide and would be with them. He'd given them um, kings and judges 
throughout the ages to rule over them as they had requested. And now the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to a point where he's fulfilling his ministry on earth. He'd lived up until the age of 30 before he started his ministry. And now he's preparing to go to the cross at Calvary and to die on that cross. That the Old Testament scriptures prophesy. And what he's giving instruction here for, he's, he's saying to his followers, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry. You believe in God. You've, you've trusted. You've had the Old Testament scriptures. You you've know who God, my Father, is. Now you've believed in him. Notice, believe also in me. When he goes on further in, the, in verse 5, he says, you know, you almost ask the question and say, well, okay, so how do I get there? What, what is this way that I need to go? What is it that I need to believe and trust in? Notice verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. We don't know where you're going, Lord. And how can we know the way? Thomas asks the question, we don't know where you're going, Lord. How can we know the way? Then the scripture that we're considering this morning, Jesus answers him. He says, I am the way. The way that you need to know, I am. He also says, he's the truth and the life. Then notice what he says. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is preparing and teaching these folks what he is going to eventually reveal further to them as they begin to understand. And once he has been crucified, he's been buried and he's resurrected again and he gives his disciples instruction, the, the 12 apostles, the instruction, well, he gave to the 11, Judas had gone and hung himself and then they chose Matthias to be the 12th apostle. And after Jesus Christ's resurrection and eventual ascension into heaven, Peter goes along and he's telling the nation of Israel that they needed to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they had crucified their, their, their Messiah. And here the Lord is laying the foundation that he is the way. Have a look at John chapter 6, verse 45. John chapter 6, verse 45. John chapter 6, 45. Notice here, this is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Who's he talking to about there? He's talking about himself. Well, if he had come from his heavenly Father, if he had been eternally existent with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, wouldn't he know which way to go? Wouldn't he be the one who could actually tell you which way to go? I remember many, many years ago going to Johannesburg to go and visit um, some family of, of Michelle's. And we had got, we had arrived and we got there and the family members were chatting and they needed to go and pick up some uh, a parcel at a particular place. And it just so happened I had come past that uh, um, building on the freeway. And I said, oh, I know the way. I know the way. I'll explain it to you. Well, I told them which way to go. And they got lost. And when they eventually came back an hour and a half later, they said, but we got lost. And I said, but hang on. But I told you which way to go. And they said, no, 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 no. You said take the third exit. It was actually the fourth exit. You see, I'd only traveled that road once. And because we traveled the road once, I, I sort of calculated in my mind, but I didn't have a clear picture. Could I show them the way? Well, I, I certainly thought I could, but I didn't really know the way. Well, long story short, they eventually managed to get the parcel that they were looking for. But folks, when the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, he is the way, he not only is the way, he knows the way. And he's the one who has prepared the way. He, he clearly says here, I mean, he's seen God the Father. God the Father is spirit. Nobody has seen God the Father. In the Old Testament, when we see the manifestation of God, when the Bible says that God walked and talked with Adam and, and Eve in the garden, 
You know who that was? That was the Lord Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate state. Before he took on physical flesh, that was the Lord Jesus Christ. So he certainly, if he was going to say, I am the way, he knows the way. Let's read, let's read on. Verily, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Now we're going to look at this over the next few weeks. We're looking at the way today, but he's the way, the truth, and the life. We're going to look at a couple of things. So over the next few weeks, don't miss this. There's a little advert here. You need to get this one and the next few. I, I'm not too sure how many it's going to be, but at least another two or three more sermons on this topic as we look at this. And then he says, I am the bread of life. Anybody wanting eternal life needed to know that the Lord Jesus Christ was the one who was going to give that. You're in John chapter 6. Just go with me to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 12. Now, let me just say that we, as believers today, for the last 2000, almost 2,000 years, we, mankind has had the completed scriptures. When Paul penned 2 Timothy and he put down his pen, when that happened, all the scripture that needed to be recorded had been recorded. And then over time, it was put together into our Bible that we now have. So for almost, not quite yet, but for almost 2,000 years, we've had complete scripture. So we have the benefit of looking backwards, looking at the scripture and seeing what is happening. When the Lord Jesus Christ was on earth, notice what he said here to, to his followers. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Well, because he hadn't been to the cross yet. He hadn't, he hadn't died, he hadn't been buried, and he hadn't resurrected again. Once he did that, for 40 days, he was on earth again. There's that number 40. And he was on earth again, and he was giving his apostles and disciples further instruction. Do you think that they understood a lot more when he was talking to them then than what he was saying to them now? And that's why they needed to believe and trust. He knew what he was going to accomplish. He knew the way he was going. And you know, if you, I, I think about that, and I think, Here's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's fully God, yet fully man, has his emotions to deal with. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said he even sweat drops of blood. There was no doubt that he felt the human emotion that you and I feel. And I believe in, in many ways, in a far greater way, because he had such understanding of what he was going to do and what he needed to do. Think about how anxious we get if there's something, there's maybe an interview we've got to go to or there's a, a doctor's appointment and we're concerned about something. I was just chatting to a nursing sister this week and she was saying how anxious folks are when they come in and she's part of um, the folk that do the, the testing for COVID and she's, she was telling me how the folks come in and they've been told they need to get tested and how anxious they are just, just to hear this, this, this test. And I've dealt with that over the years as well when folks have been told that there's a possibility that there's, they, there could be cancer or something else. The anxiousness. And here the Lord Jesus Christ says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit, notice that's a capital S, that's God the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Notice God the Holy Spirit does not lord himself. No. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore say, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. God the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was saying, you, you may not know all the things now. And, and you may not know the, the, the things that are going to happen. That's what the Lord's saying here. But there's going to come a time that God the Holy Spirit will show it to you. Well, folks, thank God that you live in this age of grace. 
that you live in a period where you have God's completed word. And as Paul writes uh, in 2 Thessalonians 2.13, it's the word of God that effectually works in them that believe. You know, we've got the whole Bible. We've got everything that we need at our disposal so that we can read it, we can study it, and we can know it. And you know what the Bible tells us? The Lord Jesus Christ is the way. He knows the way. He is the way, and he has prepared the way. So how can you know the way? Jesus Christ is the way, but God's word and God the Holy Spirit that the Bible says lives within you as a believer shows you the way through his word that he has preserved for you. Go with me to the book of Psalm, Psalms chapter, so, go to the book of Psalms and to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, and we're going to look, there's so many verses in Psalm 119. If you get the opportunity, read through the book of uh, Psalms, and here more in particular, through this week, have a look at Psalm 119, verse 30. I just want to point this out to, to you. I have chosen, here the psalmist writes and says, uh, and by the way, this psalm was written by Ezra. It says, I have chosen the way of truth. Now remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ezra writes and he says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Then we have a look at verse 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. That word vanity is emptiness. Lord, turn my eyes away from looking at emptiness. The, 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 the things which are meaningless and quicken thou me in thy way. In Hebrews 4.12, it says that, that the word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick means it's, 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 it's not only powerful, but it's fast. It's able to do it. And here he says, and quicken thou me in thy way. Make me alive. Make me alive in thy way. Once again, here Ezra is saying, Lord, I want to know your way. Make me alive in your way. Verse 38, establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. That word fear there is the fear of the Lord, the reverence of Almighty God. And Psalm 119 verse 9 says that the Lord's name is reverent. It's to be reverenced. And here... Ezra is talking about this. He says, turn my eyes away from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. You want to know the way? The Lord Jesus Christ is the way. You want to find the way and hear more about the way? God's word is going to give you that way. Let's go back to the book of John now. John chapter 8 and I want to talk to you a little bit about the light of God. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 12. Now remember the Lord Jesus Christ in John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Notice what he says here. Then spake Jesus again. Well, obviously, you need to read what he's talking about in terms of the preceding verses here. But I want to pick up this and says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Well, if he's saying this in John 8, it makes sense that he's going to say, I'm the way, because, well, I'm... The here, yeah, why is he the way? Well, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, now remember the Pharisees, they were the re religious goody goodies, right? They, and they were forever, wherever you look at these scriptures, you can see that, that they try to trick the Lord. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, the and, and the various other um, religious and political sects were always trying to trick the Lord into doing something that they wanted to trip him up. And you know what they were trying to trip him up on? Was the law. 
that the Lord Jesus Christ, being fully God and fully man, when the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth, the Old Testament scriptures had been established. And you know, if you look through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what the Lord did, he confirmed those scriptures. He established the, that they were truth. And then he prepares the way for the New Testament scriptures that are to come. And when he confronts the Lord, uh, I beg your pardon, when he confronts Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 and begins to give him further revelation, he's giving further scripture which would be written down that you and I have today. And he enlightens Paul to the truth. Notice here, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record, notice, is not true. They were calling the creator of heaven and earth, the one who was the light of the world, the one who says, if you follow me, you're not going to walk in darkness. The one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. These Pharisees were calling him a liar. Is it any different today when we look at what's happening in the world, how there are so many religions, so many different sects and, 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 and teachings that the satanic policy of evil is almost, I look at it and say, it's almost like a snowball that as time goes on, so there are more and more and more religious ideas. So there are more and more uh, religious offshoots and all to water down the truth of who Christ Jesus is and who he was and claimed to be when he came to earth. Verse 14, Jesus answered and said unto them, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came. <laughs> I smile at that because here are the Pharisees, the religious goody goodies who think they know the Old Testament scriptures and they are blind to the fact that they are dealing with the very one who has written the scripture. And he knows where he's come from. And if he knows where he's come from, does he know where he's going? That's why he says, I'm the light of the world. I'm the one you need to follow. And whither I go, I know where I've came from and I know where I'm going. You follow me, not the world. But you cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. You judge after the flesh. Ah, there's the answer. What were they doing? They were relying on their own human understanding. They were not relying on the scriptures that God their father had given them. And they were leading their people into darkness. They were walking in religious mind, with religious mindsets, but they were walking in darkness. And yet, verse 16, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. The Lord Jesus Christ knew where he came from. The Lord Jesus Christ knew what he came to do. The Lord Jesus Christ knew where he was going. And he said to his people, follow me. Let me encourage you and say, when you share the gospel, the gospel being the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross at Calvary almost 2,000 years ago now. He was buried and three days later, he rose again to give us new life. If you share that with folks and say, you know what, you need to believe and trust that the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> pardon me, the Lord Jesus Christ did everything that was required to give you eternal life, to prepare the way for you and I. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about how glorious that is? And then you share it with folks and you think, well, this is so good. People are just going to lap it up and want it. No, they don't. No, they don't. The world is not interested in truth. The world is interested in its own perverted way of truth. And sometimes as Christians, 
we can feel worn down because there's all of we've been bombarded from all of this and the social media and the media that we have today the the, the ability that they have to just get in um via your cell phone, via your, your, your computer, your television, all over. You are being bombarded with all these different kinds of mindsets and sometimes very subtle. And without realizing it, we are being conditioned and programmed to think in a way that Satan would want us to think. And that is why it is so important that we spend time in the scriptures on a regular basis where Paul the apostle writes to a young Timothy whom he had said in 2 Timothy 1 for I'm mindful of your tears, Timothy. I'm mindful of your, of your fact that you, you're feeling a bit timid. You're feeling a little bit, a bit anxious. And then in verse 6, he says, stir up that which is, you know, he says, come on, be reminded of this. And he says in, in 2 Timothy 2.15, study, study. Why? Well, Timothy, you're going to have to get God's word into the very depths of your soul, and you're going to have to keep sticking in the word because the, Paul knew what was coming. He was, Paul was preparing himself to, to, be, to be put to death. He knew that, that his time on earth was almost up and that he was handing, handing the baton over to Timothy, and Titus, and Philemon, and, and the other faithful men. That's why he says, teach these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So it's not a kind of thing that we can just glibly gloss over God's word. We have to read it and really know it and study it. And look at it. And when we see this, we can see that God, the Holy Spirit that lives within us, is going to guide us into the truth. And who is God, the Holy Spirit, going to point us to? The Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, right now. And he's interceding for us. When God the Father looks at us, he sees us in and through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees saints. Yes, saints ambassadors, brothers and sisters in Christ that should be looking out for one another and caring for one another. And that's why when Paul writes to the Corinthians, he chastises them because these were believers and they certainly were not looking out for each other. And you have someone who knows the way, has gone the way, and who the, where the book of Hebrews says, for the joy that was set before him, the Lord Jesus Christ knew what was coming. He knew what he had to accomplish. When he, before he came to earth, he knew what he was going to go through. And he did that for you and for me. He did that for every single person that would believe and trust the message of his completed, finished sacrifice on the cross at Calvary. There's nothing more you and I have to do. When we want to know how much God loves us, we simply need to be reminded of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary, hanging there, dying a death that was unjustified and yet so willingly done because he knew the path he had to take. He knew the way. Go with me. To, uh, let's have a look here. John chapter 17 now. John chapter 17. And I can certainly see I'm only going to get through my first point here, God's way. That's fine. That's okay. We've got a long way to go and many, many more Sundays to come. So as long as the Lord tarries, we'll be looking into this and we'll look at this. I don't want to rush this because it is absolutely vital that you, that you get this into the very depths of your soul. And if you know this um, and you say, oh, well, Aiden, you, you're telling me all stuff I know. Well, praise the Lord for that and share it with others then. But let's continue to look at this. You know, I read these verses and, and I read them over and over. And every single time I read them, they just speak to my soul again and again and again. And that's why we need to do the same. John chapter 17. Have a look at what the Lord says. Then said he unto his disciples. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Oh, I've got the wrong verse. Hang on. My, my apologies. Hold on. I looked down and thought, that's not what I wanted to say. That's not what Jesus was going to say. Anyway, it is what Jesus was going to say, but it's not what I want to share with you this morning. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus 
and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son, notice, also may glorify thee. What was the Lord Jesus Christ? He wasn't saying, Father, look at me. Look what I've done. You know, give me the praises. Come on, come on. Tap me on my shoulder. Where's all the angels? Come on, let them all sing hallelujahs and, and praise me. He's saying, no, glorify me. Why? Because there was something specific and purposeful that the Lord Jesus Christ had come to accomplish. Let's read on and see. But he says, glorify thy son. Why? That thy son also may glorify thee. The Lord Jesus Christ, the book of Colossians, and we're going to look at that next week. We won't get to it now. Talks about the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ was the visible manifestation of the Godhead. When you looked at the Lord Jesus Christ, you saw God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. He was the physical manifestation and the representative of the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three individuals manifest in one Godhead. Verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, let me just uh, stop here and say, many folks use that verse and say, you see, uh, that says that God the Father has to give those who need to be saved. No, if, if I say to you, listen, by the way, you can, you can, um, I've, I've, just been into in, in, into I've been to the shops. I've just done a whole shop there, and and you know there's a whole lot of groceries that I'm putting it over there. Please go and take what you need. Take whatever you need because I want to help you. And please go and take whatever you need. And you go in and you see, and the and the groceries are all packed out there. And you say, okay, I'll have that, and I'll take that, and I'll take that, and you 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 put it in the bag and you walk out. And someone says, oh, where did you get that? And you say, no, well, it was given to me. Well, you had to make a choice to go and take some, not so. And you left some behind. We have a choice. Every human being has a choice to accept or to reject. What did the Pharisees say? You're speaking about yourself. You're lying. You're a liar. So did they believe? No. What happened? Well, they were lost. So here the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about this and don't get confused that God is going to pick some for salvation. Folks, Paul writes to Timothy and says, God would have all men to be saved. It's God's desire that every single soul gets saved. That's God's desire. So when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary, he paid the price for every single soul. Not some every soul. The sad reality is not all accept, many reject. Let's read on. And this is life eternal, that they may, might know the, the only true God. Now remember what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, glorify me so I can glorify you. When the Lord Jesus Christ was glorifying his, his father, as the representative of the Godhead, living a perfect life. And, and folks were looking at this and the whole, by the way, it wasn't only those on earth. It was the principalities and powers. It was the angels that had not fallen that were seeing what the Lord Jesus Christ was doing. It was the fallen angels that were seeing what the Lord Jesus Christ was doing. And by the way, angels cannot, angels cannot be saved once they have fallen. The angels that followed Satan are lost for all eternity. Do you think they realized and recognized that they had been duped by Satan? Satan wasn't worried about them. He just wanted cohorts and followers. And now, and, and he managed to, to convince a vast major, um, a portion of the angelic realm to follow him and to believe them. And they lost as much as he is, they lost. And you know what? He still keeps telling, he's telling them the lie that he's going to figure this out. They are lost. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came down and he says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Once again, if God, his father had sent him, the Lord knew where he was to go, uh, came from and where he was going. I have glorified thee on earth. Notice the Lord Jesus Christ did not come here claiming glory for himself. I have glorified thee. He's talking about his heavenly father. He says, I've, I've come to do your work. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. 
Well, Lord, I've come, I've done this, and I'm finishing this work. You know what? And when did he complete it? It was on the cross at Calvary when he said, it is finished. And now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Notice. Notice that verse. Don't overlook that. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had. Not going to have. I've already, I've had it. I've, I, I know what that is. When he says, I go and I'm preparing a place for you. He knows. Folks, we are not serving a dead God. We are not serving a God that does not know a, the place that he is going to prepare and has prepared for us. We're serving a God who has come the right way, has walked the right path, and who knows the way to eternal life, who knows the way for us to go. Let's read on. And I have manifest thy name unto, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Notice, they've kept thy word, Lord. Everybody who, who followed and trusted in what God had said has kept the word and are saved. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. And have known surely that I come out from thee. And they, notice here, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Wow. They have believed that thou didst send me. Folks, the question we have to ask today. Our souls. Do I believe? Do I believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? And we're going to unpack this a lot more over the next few weeks. Yes, I do. Do I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way? It is only through his shed blood on the cross at Calvary that I'm going to be justified. Do I believe that if I had to try and find my own way, I would be lost? And finding my own way would maybe be through some religious activity. Or thinking I can do things, or I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm able to do something more, which is going to make God love me more. Do I believe that? Then, then we're going down the wrong way. The way today is the way of grace. And we're going to look at that as we go on. And I want to just end with one last, one last um, um, verse here. So, you know, we're looking at here, and, and I've only looked at the first point, God's way. We've talked about let not your heart be troubled. How can we know the way? And God, the Lord Jesus Christ being the light of God. So the question then is, so what if they don't believe? What if people don't believe? Go with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 18. We're going to end here with this. John chapter 8 verse 18. I am... One that bear witness of myself and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, where is thy father? Jesus answered, you neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Why? Well, because the Old Testament scriptures had prophesied about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to look at that next week. We're going to take the scriptures that we've got under the second point, man's way. I'm, I'm going to unpack that for you next week. Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. In other words, if they had known who the Lord Jesus Christ was, if they had read the Old Testament scriptures, he's talking here to the nation of Israel, if you had read your Bible, if you had studied your Bible, you would have seen the prophecies about me. You would have recognized who I am. I did all these miracles. And the Bible said, that's what I'm going to do. The Bible says that, the, you know, Israel required signs. They needed signs, wonders, and miracles. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ did signs, wonders, and miracles when he walked on the face of this earth. 
We don't need to see signs, wonders, and miracles today to know that the Lord Jesus Christ loves us. We've got his completed word. We know based on the evidence of scripture and through the eyes of faith that God our Father has provided the answer for us. And that even though we have the physical challenges and emotional and mental and financial challenges, that the book of Romans chapter 8 says, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Verse 20, these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. I don't want to digress here, but Christ could only be taken when, when the time was right. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Why? Well, because you did not believe in me. You did not trust me. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Well, why not? Because the Lord Jesus Christ existed for all eternity past with God, his father and the Holy Spirit. The, Jesus Christ didn't come into existence. God didn't create Jesus when he, when, when he came to earth. Christ took on physical form, a whole lot different. Verse 24 is the verse I want to end with. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And you know what? The religious leaders of the day led the nation of Israel into deeper and deeper darkness that they got to the point when they cried release unto us Barabbas a a robber a thief and a murderer and put to death the prince of peace the lord of lords the creator of heaven and earth because of their blindness we are not blind we have god's word we're going to unpack this over the next few weeks and see the glorious light that can shine into our hearts and in our minds as we trust and believe in our Lord and Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Father God, thank you for your word that we can read, believe, and trust this morning. And thank you that you teach us the truths that you would have us to know as we walk in the light of the word you have given us and in the light of the truth that you are the way, the truth, and the life. In Christ Jesus' precious name, we thank you. Amen.